Broski Broskies, this is Zach Cloud, continuing my No Sun Challenge in Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, I failed last time. I failed. So I'm going to have to rethink my strategy if I can remember even what it was. It's been a while. Uh, let's see. Okay. Plant. Okay, this time I think what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'll respond to the land as much as I need to, but I will ahead of time start really reinforcing the water lane, because that was what gave me the most trouble, and I cannot be saved by the lawnmowers. Okay, first let this rascal get to uh, about here instead of here. Because then I can get a little more sun first. And still we'll defeat him in time. Another one in the same lane. Chew you up and spit you out. Speaking of chewing up, uh, dog toys. Has anyone noticed that they've gotten a lot lower in quality nowadays? Uh, it's uh, like before, years ago, in the 80s and 90s, they actually made dog toys for dogs. They made them out of really tough material like burlap or something. You know, they were kind of rough and they were made for chewing. They were made to be manhandled and not fall apart. But then, uh, for some reason, they... Oh, whoa! What the heck? They're gonna be splitting me way too wide here. Gosh. That was unexpected. <laughs> Everyone just coming all at once. Well, at least I got all the land lanes on now. <laughs> that was unusual. Anyway, like I was saying, they used to make dog toys out of tough material so that it would actually stand up to the dogs chewing it. But then they've started just up and making toys like regular plushies. It's like they forgot that they were for dogs or something and just started making a bunch of regular plushies, which of course get torn up right away, and stuffing got everywhere. So they came up with this bright new idea of making stuffingless toys. Uh, so they're just these flat uh, plushies with no stuffing. It's like, well, great, great. Why not make the toys still out of material that will stand up to them instead of stuff that'll still be instantly shredded and just doesn't make as much mess. <laughs> uh, phew, that was close. But yeah, it's like they aren't even thinking about that. They're... Bleh. They need to make dog toys that are actually for dogs. I know they still do, but there used to be a lot more variety which is odd, because you'd think that now there'd be more variety, but I mean variety that actually do their job. Oh gosh, and all of a sudden water, ah! Uh, just right away. Two at once. Gosh, it looks like this playthrough is going to be really trying to get me. Luckily I had just enough to get two snow peas. So that's a good start there. Got the most important ones down. Yeah, next I'm gonna try to supplement them with uh, some regular pea shooters. And then, uh, as soon as I need to, walls right here. Maybe right here, depending on if I wanna get chompers in there, but I don't know if I'll be able to afford it. We'll see, we'll see. Wave. See what it does. Well, so far so good, I'd say. I 
Gotta keep a good eye on the land lanes, though, in case I need to reinforce them. Uh-oh, diver. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this here. Holy diver! You've been down too long in the midnight sea! Gosh, uh... I, that song, I love that song, but I have no idea what it means. There's been some, like, you know, theories that it's, uh, about Jesus diving down from heaven, or about Satan and his downfall from heaven, or I don't know. It's, uh, pretty ambiguous and doesn't make a whole lot of sense on its own, but it's a great song anyway. I'll gladly sing along with it even if I have no idea what it means. Um, back, uh, remember Christmas, of course you do. Uh, some of you probably watched that, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer classic claymation that was made so long ago. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Whee! But, uh, everyone watches that sometimes, which is cool. But didn't you notice that Santa's kind of a jerk in it? I mean, he, when, when they found out that Rudolph had the glowy nose during the, uh, testing exercises, and, uh, uh, his father was lowering his head, and Santa was telling him, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What a pity. He had a good takeoff, too. It's like, what? Shamed for what? For his son having a glowy nose? Why? <laughs> it made no sense. Santa was a jerk. And then uh, Rudolph uh, says it would be an honor to light the way for his sleigh. What, an honor to serve a jerk? Oh, come on. He's not all that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it was a good, good movie and all, but it really had a jerkish Santa. <laughs> ah, the zombies and their floaties. Too bad they were that smart, even though for not having brains, they're doing a pretty good job trying to infiltrate. Another thing, one thing that's been bothering me for a while is that, like, okay, we've been taking a lot of good steps towards uh, polluting less and recycling more and, and stuff like that, which is awesome, but we took a step backwards with the, the K cups of coffee, the, the uh, Keurig coffee maker that does it by the cup or whatever, and, and you use those K cups. It's like, that is really taking a step backwards, because those aren't even recyclable. And even then, recycling still can cause pollution and stuff, the process itself, because of all the chemical reactions and stuff that they do, and burning stuff. Um, so it's like, I don't know why that got popular, making coffee by the cup. It's like, come on, I'd rather guzzle it. You can make coffee by the cup out of a, a regular size thing anyway. Uh, they have recyclable or reusable K-cups, I should say. They, they like have, in some stores, they have re reusable ones where you can just fill them with whatever coffee you want. And yeah, let's go ahead and get some reinforcement down here. I didn't realize that, the, that it was already time. Lies. So we've got extra firepower, we've got our uh, chillers over here. How confident are you that we can survive? I think we can. I think we got it this time. This guy's gonna be the trouble. But our walnut's in pretty good shape, and his hat just popped off, so I think we'll get it. It wasn't so bad this time. I think it was meaner to us beforehand, 
and then got nicer here at the end. It used up all of its meanness. Yeah. So it was a breeze this time. We just needed a better strategy, that's all. Tangle Kelp, aquatic plant that pulls a zombie underwater. And they're only 25, but they're only single use. So they're a good thing if you need to just really quickly save your water lane in a hurry. So good last resort. Oh, we got jumpers, we got buckets, we got newspapers, we got snorkelers. Oh boy, this is going to be tough. Okay, let's get our usual up here. And oh, I, I need a lily pad. Maybe I should have bought that extra slot after all. Um, let's go with this layout and see how we do. We are just here waiting. Waiting for the zombies. <laughs> uh, all kinds of music that I've liked to listen to throughout the years. Some of it uh, has been uh, TV music theme, uh, TV opening theme songs. Like, when I was a kid, there were several shows that I didn't like, but I loved to watch the openings and listen to just listen to the music as and to appreciate it as an art form. Like uh, Murder, She Wrote, Star Trek, the, the various Star Treks, uh, Measure Up, the educational show. Like sometimes I watched it, but usually I just came to listen to the theme song. Uh, MASH, A-Team, Knight Rider, uh, some other ones I can't remember, some more like adult-oriented shows that I, that I didn't have any interest in, but, uh, I, I just like to listen to the theme songs because th I like them. Have you ever done that, anyone? Is there any shows where you used to just watch them for the theme songs and nothing else? Oh, Mask was another one. Mask Crusaders, working overtime, fighting crime, fighting crime. I can't really sing with the music already going on here. <laughs> but, uh, but there was also all kinds of good shows, or at least good openings to shows. Any that you guys watched just for the openings or closing credits, maybe? Speaking of nostalgia, it's, uh, it's been hard for me to find old episodes of Price is Right. I, I love that show, uh, especially in the old days, though, uh, with Bob Barker as the host, like back in the 80s and 90s especially. That era I liked because it had the music and, and the old instruments and stuff before they started like remixing and changing the songs and stuff. I just like the relaxing feel of, of the whole atmosphere of the show. So it was like my interest wasn't just in the show itself but in the atmosphere that it gave off. And uh, and now it's like you can find so many things online, you can get watch so many things on Netflix, but I don't think you can really find the old Price is Right episodes, except I found some of them, uh, phew, I found some of them online, like TV Lover, TV Lover, some, some dude named something, I forget. And, and a couple other dudes on YouTube, although it always gets taken down all the time. Uh, but it's like, what are the networks supposed to do about that? It's like, the prices are outdated, so it's not like it's advertising anymore. And some people just want to watch these old episodes, you know? 
sometimes there were some people with neat personalities on there some people want to see and in my case I just want to watch it for the music and atmosphere but there's no way to really find it legally and they're not gonna put those on DVDs I don't think because all the licensing and and other bullcrap because of the prices and, and stuff it's like what, what can I do in my case? Is there anything anyone knows that I can do? Other than, you know, searching around at flea markets for VHSs or something? I, there's probably not much I can do. Which is too bad. Because I really like the atmosphere. <laughs> I was good that it was lucky for me that the jumper happened to be in that lane. Okay, looks like we got most of it sorted, but the bottom lane is kind of dicey. I'm gonna plant this guy, hope that this guy dies before he can activate or eat it. Uh, uh, phew, okay. And now it'll go off and kill this guy, and the piece should be able to take care of this guy. Oh boy, bucket head now in the water. Time to set up a wall. Hold him back as much as I can. And have this ready to build another wall. And I'm also going to set down, a, well, I'm gonna wait a bit. Now it's okay, but I want to eventually put some regular pea shooters in the water as well, so we can, you know, have some extra insurance, especially when it comes to the last wave. Up, oh, this is going to be a little trouble here. I think it'll be okay though. Let's put up the wall anyway. Let's go ahead foundation set. Land is still okay for now. Man. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some reinforcement here. Try to take this guy out. Because this guy will take a while to kill too. I love how frantically and angrily he eats. I mean, I don't love it for my nuts sake, but, uh, but it's just kind of comical. Okay, make you jump. Boing. Oh boy, we've got a land lover here. Uh, hmm, I need more than this guy. I might just use a squash on him. I'd have to just use a squash on him because this isn't going to be in time. The wall is too temporary. Let's just do it. I hate using one time use items, but, but I gotta think of the future and how much sun I have. This should be okay, although it'll be very slow. But let's go ahead and reinforce. Okay, so far so good. Now I can put down an extra pea if I need to, but I'd rather save up for some snow peas. There's several uh, large waves in this one. So I got a lot to live through. Water is about the best I can get it. Land is what I'm gonna have to watch out for. that. Okay, I got enough to afford a snow pea, but let's wait and see where it's needed, if at all. I might end up just putting up a bunch of walls. 
Let's see what this big wave looks like. Okay, it's mostly small fry, but a lot of them. This guy could potentially be a problem because he's had a shield all this time. So is he. I'm gonna start by putting up walls here. Uh, this wall's not gonna be in time. Ooh, let's slow him down a little. I should have done that sooner, but I wasn't sure. Okay. Gonna need a either another wall or something. Let, let's use the cheaper option. Just walls all around. Walls for everybody. I feel like Oprah Winfrey. Look under your chair. What do you got? Walnuts. wall didn't last as long as I thought. Sure got gnarled. Oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna wait and then probably use squash on these guys. The reason I'm waiting is because if I take them out too soon then this lane will immediately be refilled by more zombies behind them. So by waiting I will Lower the amount of aggressives. I should have done something about this guy sooner. Let's go ahead and do this here. Uh, oh boy, actually now I, I didn't budget well enough, but it looks like we'll be able to take this guy out after all. That's good. Uh, but now this guy, uh, I got too distracted. Oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, I should have yeah, paid more attention. Like I said, though, I'm not the sharpest crayon in the Happy Meal. Alright, we're gonna have some more tough time in the water, but I think we've pretty much got it fortified. I'm gonna try to fill in some more snow peas, but we're coming up on the last, uh, yeah, on the last wave. So I'm gonna put it at the top because it's gonna be vital that we defend this top lane. Depending on what happens here, they should be okay. This one, not so much. Uh, okay, okay, he got myrtleized. Good. Okay, let's defend this top to its full capacity. Everything else I think is okay. And then we'll just have that final wave, which we just got to make sure that the top and the water will be okay. And I've done all that I can, I think, to ensure that. But if an emergency pops up, I've got the tangled kelp and I've got squash. So I gotta be handy on the trigger. Come on, get Mr. Grumpy Face. There you go. <laughs> he still tries to eat even after he has no head. Okay, final wave, 3-4. Let's do it. Alright, I think that the top lane will be okay. Mostly because of the firepower and the wall. Water, I think will be okay too, but the 
bot no, the bottom lane, I don't know. It it could be bad. Aw, I was hoping he would take out the uh, cone heads. See, I that was why I planted it behind them. We might lose this and that's okay. I gotta okay, phew, good job. Good job, little trooper. Got it now. Let's, oh, what do you know? We did it. Oh, that was pretty rough. Pretty rough indeed. A car key. What do we do with a car key? Crazy Dave's car key. Now you can visit Crazy Dave's shop. Woohoo! I was looking forward to that. Let's go ahead and do that. Hey, you found my car key! You know what that means! Crazy Dave's Twiggly Dinks is open for business! Have a look, see if you can't find something you like. Okay, I can get the eight slots. I can get the pool cleaner! Uh, here's how much money I have, and I can afford that. And I can afford that. Yeah! Phew! This pool cleaner will help so much. It's gonna revolutionize defense of my house. So now the pool lanes won't be such a, a, a stressful situation. Now the rake takes out the first zombie that steps on it. It lasts three levels. The thing is though, I timed it. The zombie that comes out and gets hit by the rake is earlier than normal. So, it really doesn't do anything. It just makes an extra zombie come and die, and that's it. So, it's not a useful thing at all. These and these are way too expensive, and of course, we're not using any sun, so we don't need them. But usually, they give you double sun, and the Gatling pea shoots so many peas all at once. Four at a time. They're really cool. Alright, well... <laughs> Now I'm crazy! <laughs> I love crazy, Dave. War and peas. <laughs> All twiddly dinks are priced to move. Alright, Dave, we're gonna leave you here for now and uh, uh, do some more fighting next time. See you later, broskies.